devolution has helped in terms of access to resources. There are particular counties that would receive much less in terms of resources from the national government prior or before devolution. And so we are seeing a sense of their existing now. But even when we look at the history of those particular counties, they still feel a sense of being excluded from the national pie. And you can even see it in terms of national leadership. So I would say that devolution has reduced it, but it's still there because the issue that we're having now with the counties is conversations around clan. You know, majority clans are now taking over particular positions and leaving out minority smaller tribes to sort of scavenge for the remaining seats. And it's an, it's an issue. And I believe that it's something that we have to take inclusion more seriously and more passionately. Because even when we look at our constitution, it talks about our diversity and accepting our diversity. But then when you look at what happens on the ground and on paper, we do not recognize that. And, and the reason why it's concerning is when you have a population that's very young, and a lot of the population doesn't have access to opportunities or employment, then they will be utilized and used by bad politicians to continue to spread this division. So Kenyans are very peculiar because we can see it as an issue, but we will make jokes around it. You saw people joking around, what do you need as a starter kit to join government? They were saying a brown jacket. Mm -hmm. You know, they are stereotypes. So we are basically, uh, channeling and spreading these stereotypes about particular tribes and say that you have to be aligned to this particular tribe to be able to receive an appointment. It might look like a joke, but the underlying issue is that people are recognizing that there's a problem with inclusion in our country. And, and this is the thing that we are discussing tonight. How can we have inclusion that allows for diversity, for us to recognize our diversity and see the importance of diversity and making sure that resources, because at the end of the day, the main question here is are resources getting to the grassroots? People feel this is the only road we must take. We must have leadership yeah. to have resources to the grassroots. But we need to answer the question, how can we have resources getting to the grassroots without that road not being the only road? Yeah. There has to be other accesses. But is tribalism still an issue for the younger generation like yours, like your, the one you belong to right now? Yes. So interestingly, a lot of youth that we work with would say that tribalism would always come up right before an election. Amongst their, their friends themselves, it never comes up. But as soon as it's time for an election or selecting a partner, that's when now your parents will start coming and asking you, they're from where? Uh, what's their last name and their family? <laughs> That's now where that question comes in. So for the younger generation, tribalism actually comes from parents. It's, it's not from them. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's always right before an election period because you're finding groups clustering themselves based on their coalition and saying, this is where our tribe is. So this is the direction that we're all taking and you included. Yeah. But that's why we also saw uh, a lot of young people not participating. Uh, I think it's their method of also rejecting and also saying that they, I don't have to. We're also seeing a lot of intermarriages happening with that generation where young Younger people are choosing partners not based on their tribe, but it's a battle for very many of them.